Hello, I'm Joseph Bendy. Welcome to a special edition of Transit 2000. It's my pleasure to introduce our guest host for this program, Nichelle Nichols. Welcome, Nichelle. Thank you, Joseph. You know, as Uhura of Star Trek, I faced a lot of challenges in a high-tech universe of the future. But today, here on Earth, we face some very real threats to our environment and quality of life. But fortunately, there are some promising answers. I know some of you may think this does look like the bridge of the Starship Enterprise, but in fact, it has a much more down-to-earth importance. That's right. This is RTD's Rail Central Control Center, an electronic hub of Southern California's emerging transportation system. In the first of a two-part Transit 2000 special report, I'm going to give you a glimpse of Los Angeles' mass transit future. It's here today, in Toronto, Canada. Recently, I took a mass transit tour of the city that some see as a model for Southern California's 21st century transportation system. Most transportation experts consider mass transit as the wave of the future, but don't count the automobile out yet. Electronically controlled highways and a new generation of smart cars are on the way and coming fast. And for today or the 21st century, getting around safely in a clean and comfortable environment is essential to the success of any transportation system. This is the major responsibility of the RTD's Transit Police. We'll meet some of the men and women who are making our mass transit experience better than ever. All this and a lot more on Transit 2000. Some urban planners see this as an image of the transportation future of Los Angeles. It's Toronto, Canada. Yes, Toronto. In fact, the two cities have much in common. But what makes Toronto different is an efficiently integrated system of buses, trolleys, subways, and commuter trains serving a city that's called North America's mass transit showplace. The chief manager of the Toronto Transit Commission, or TTC, is Alan Leach. The transit system is the backbone of this community, and I've been often quoted by saying that this city only works as well as its transit system. We carry between 1,400,000 and 1,600,000 people every day. That's about half the community. Everybody in this city rides transit. In 1954, with a single four and a half mile subway line, Toronto's TTC stood where Los Angeles does today. The subway was an instant success, and over the years continued to grow, transforming the city. In 1967, Toronto reached out to its emerging Southern California-style suburbs with a commuter rail system called GO Transit. If the GO trains look familiar, they are. The same double-deckers are used for Los Angeles's new Metrolink. From the beginning, all this was integrated with an extensive bus and light rail streetcar system. Probably the first thing a visitor notices about the Toronto transit system is how clean it is and convenient. During the rush hour, for example, these trains are scheduled to arrive every two and a half minutes. The Chief General Manager of Administration and Planning for the TTC is Dr. Yuri Pill. The Metropolitan Toronto is looked at as the livable city. It has been characterized uh, uh, by, I guess it was Peter Ustinov, as New York run by the Swiss. Toronto works to a great extent because so many people use transit. The bus system, the streetcars, the subway, the trolley coaches are all part of uh, one system so that we try to make it as convenient as possible uh, for the buses to bring people to the subway. The subway is the backbone of our system. That's, uh, we try to get as many people onto it as possible and then have all the parts working together. And For instance, at our stations, we uh, don't have turnstiles or, or barriers for the people getting off the buses going onto the subway. We also work as closely as possible with the commuter rail system, that is, have uh, points where the two interchange. A single ticket costing the equivalent of roughly one and a half American dollars gives you access to the entire metropolitan Toronto transit system covering 240 square miles. It's not inexpensive but about average for North America. Even so, Q 
Keeping passengers happy and the system on track and on time is a big job. Good afternoon, Transit Control Center. This is Toronto's Transit Control Center. It's the heart of the city subway system. Here, all of the cars on the line are monitored and controlled as they move through the city's 66 subway stations. A sophisticated electronics, communications, and control system links the men and women in this room to every train in the system, keeping track of arrivals and departures. Operators can be instructed to adjust speed when necessary to maintain on-time schedules. Centralized communications also maximize response time in case of accidents or emergencies. The most state-of-the-art element of the Toronto system is the city's Scarborough line. Here, trains are totally automated, monitored by trackside computers, and operated by remote control. There is an onboard human operator, but only for backup and emergencies. Shane McShane is Transit Control Services Supervisor. You've got a little cursor, it looks like a cursor moving along, it indicates a train. It tells us how many cars are involved, whether the doors are opened and closed. It tells us the speed, the uh, braking, uh, any problems on the train is actually relayed back to us. It will regulate, automatically regulate all the headways without anybody having to do anything. Toronto's buses are vital links in the citywide system, and they have communication centers of their own, combining roadside sensors, onboard telephones, and computer consoles. Joseph Simchek is a Toronto Communications Information System, or CIS, manager. When a bus passes a certain location called a signpost, and there are about three or four hundred signposts or more throughout the, the whole city, when the bus passes a signpost, a low-level microwave is emitted. It is picked up by the bus and read. We know the status of that bus, whether it's stationary servicing a stop, whether the doors are closed and it's continuing on in service, whether there are other buses close by. So they are supplying information to the CIS control center here in regards to how the line is running in order to provide a better service for the riding public. The Toronto system is impressive, but not without problems. A reflection of the TTC's success is the fact that 68% of its revenues come from the fare box. But the economic turndown of the past few years has reduced ridership, and fewer paying passengers threaten to create a downward spiral of declining service and stagnant growth. Also, even in this show place of mass transit, the automobile has far from disappeared. Despite a sagging economy, declining ridership and the temptations of the ever-present automobile, the Government of Ontario, anticipating continued urban growth, has committed to a 20-year, $8 to $9 billion expansion plan that will double the city's existing transit system. As a rule of thumb, a bus system will carry six to 7,000 people an hour. Uh, a streetcar trolley system will carry up to about 15,000. Uh, the light rail systems that we have will carry maybe 20,000. Subway carries 40,000. So we want to make sure that we have capacity built into the system uh, to carry maximum demand. It's a, an expensive proposition going in, but the paybacks over time to the community uh, are so great that uh, I, I don't think you can afford it not to build it. This may be well and good for Toronto, but is it really possible to make such a system work in car-loving Southern California? You are, in fact, spending far more uh, money on transit at this point in time, even per capita, than Toronto is. We built our system back uh, over the last three decades, and Los Angeles is starting now. I think you have some great opportunities there to achieve what we have. And maybe 20 or 30 years from now, uh, there'll be someone from Toronto going down to Los Angeles and interviewing them as to how they achieved their remarkable success. That's my hope. Building a fast, efficient, and integrated transportation system takes money, time, and commitment. Los Angeles has just begun to develop its mass transportation system for the 21st century. Toronto has offered us some intriguing glimpses of the shape of things to come. <laughs>